Hey guys, welcome to Digit.in and I am so damn excited to be talking to you about the new Zephyrus Duo. Now this is a laptop that's, uh, well I guess a natural evolution of the Zenbook series. Asus has done some pretty great things with it, there's some things that are just completely wrong. You know, there's a whole bunch of things to talk about, I've got notes. So let's just begin, but before we dive deep in, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button on our channel and of course, don't miss out on hitting the bell icon so that you get every update from us. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's begin. So first off, I wanna go over the specs of the machine that we have with us today. Now this is powered by the Intel Core i7 10875H processor. It's a eight core 16 thread processor with a base speed of 2.3 gigahertz and turboing all the way up to 5.1, but that's like, you know, one core only. Yeah, so, and then there's a 4.8 gigahertz turbo as well, and then there's thermal velocity. Intel's done some pretty interesting things with its 10 gen processor, so we'll get into that in like greater detail in the later part. Um, the GPU on this thing is the NVIDIA RTX 2070 Super Max Q, or Max, yeah, Super Max Q. Uh, eight gigs of VRAM, great stuff right there. RAM, you've got 32 gigs on board. And the way it works is there's 16 GB of RAM already soldered onto the motherboard and there's a singular 16 GB DIMM slot um, or rather 16 GB stick that's populated into the solo DIMM slot on the motherboard. So you've got 32 gigs of DDR4 memory. Honest to God truth, I don't think you'll ever need anything more than that. Super cool is the display. This is a full HD IPS panel, uh, Pantone validated and it has a refresh rate of 300 Hertz. Like up until last year, like literally, I wouldn't even say a year ago, just about at the beginning of the year at CES in January, we were only seeing prototypes and, you know, hush hush word of laptops that might have a 300 Hertz display. Asus had of course already created one by that time, but this is a mainstream machine. It's available for sale. You can buy it today. And this is not the only laptop from the company that's got a 300 Hertz display. So there's like, this thing is going mainstream. And of course, the star of the show over here is the secondary display, the ScreenPad Plus, which has a 4K resolution and it's an IPS screen, but it is not the same screen as your primary display. So we're gonna cover these two things in the display section in much greater detail. I very strongly recommend you get a snack, maybe a pillow, maybe get a foot massage while this review goes on and on. Now, given all of the specification set, like this machine is perfect for content creators, for 3D artists, for gamers, of course, for gamers. I mean, it's a gaming machine. Um, anybody who, even for guys like who are into AI and ML kind of stuff, this is sort of tailor-made for these lots of interesting use cases. But today in this review, we're gonna talk about the gaming performance and the creative workloads. We've got quite a few of those to talk about. So let's dive right in. We'll start with gaming first. Now you guys are already familiar with our standard suite of games that we test. For this one, we went a little overboard. We tested a few extra games. Well, I wouldn't call it overboard. I just added three more games to it. And uh, it's pretty cool. I get to play games for a living. What's up with that? Hey mom, I made it in life. This is always my goal, but what else? So um, in terms of, we test all of the games with the laptop set to its turbo profile because um, with ASUS systems, the maximum performance you can get is with the systems set to turbo. But in terms of gaming, whew, okay, so we test all of the games at 1080p ultra graphic preset and 1080p high graphic preset. That's the standard for all of them, except for Doom Eternal, which we test at ultra and not ultra nightmare. Uh, what I've seen is that if you go any higher than the ultra, you're not really getting that much of a visual benefit unless you're gaming on a large 27 inch display. This is just 15 inches guys. It's not that big. 15 inches used to be big, but it's not anymore. So um, with that, you can see all of the frame rate numbers on your screen right now. Now, as you would notice that none of these numbers are close to 300 FPS, but that's all right because 300 FPS is meant for people who are into esports. So if you were to fire up CSGO on this, you would definitely be hitting not maybe not 300 but you'll get north of 200 fps easy you could see the same in overwatch you could see it in popular other popular titles like maybe valorant and stuff like that uh, if you want us to test that out by the way do let me know in the comments and we'll especially do you know a test of what kind of graphic settings you need to have for your game 
in order to hit the 300 FPS mark. So in terms of all of the uh, frame rates, you already have seen them on the screen. Pretty impressive gaming behavior, if I may say so myself. Now, the other part of this is, of course, the creative workloads. So the creative task, now we have standard tests that we've built in. We've got uh, Lightroom, where we render batch files of 50, 100, and 500 RAW files shot from a Nikon Z7. So these are very, very high resolution RAW files. And then we have a staple project that we made in Premiere with lots and lots of uh, effects, uh, transitions, LUT files, etc., which we export in 4K. And we export a five minute chunk and a 20 minute chunk. So the numbers again are on the screen. It's very interesting because um, we're seeing somewhat slower render times on this machine, especially when it comes to Lightroom. And surprisingly, even Premiere's five minute uh, export. And the reason for all of that, um, and even in fact, the reason for somewhat, maybe not the top notch most gaming experience could be explained by thermals, which we'll talk about now, actually, let's just get right into it. So thermals, okay. This is one area where we have a problem because uh, Asus has really over-engineered this device. Actually, no, it's not over-engineered. It's very well-engineered. You've got the screen pad that lifts up so that the fans underneath can actually pull in a lot of air. Despite that, we are noticing temperatures in the 90s so very often. Cores are throttling. It's kind of crazy. At no point in my testing did the CPU hit 5.1 gigahertz on any core. And in fact, we don't see it go over the 4.5 gigahertz mark at any time, which is pretty surprising. Then with respect to Lightroom, the temperatures stay between the 75 to 85 degree bracket and the clock speeds are between 2.5 and 3 gigahertz only. And that's a very, very tight frequency range and it's well below what you would expect the CPU to be performing at, especially for a sustained workload like a 500 raw file render. At this point, it's not the RAM is not maxed out, the GPU is not in play, it's all about the CPU, and yet we see this kind of behavior. Even while gaming, for example, with respect to Battlefield 5, we see the CPU drop frequency quite often, and we also notice that the temperatures on the CPU spike up to 90 degree, 95 degree even. With Premiere Pro, we've noted temperatures as high as 99 degrees on multiple occasions in the 20 minute export that we run. So there's something definitely up with the thermal system on this machine. Now, it could be that this entire thing is isolated to the machine I have for review, which would make me really, really unlucky because the G14 that I reviewed earlier, make sure to check out that review, by the way. It's a pretty awesome machine. Um, the G14 was also like really bad in terms of thermals and could be attributed to a machine issue. And then we have this one right here, same problem. In fact, this machine has been idling for the last about 40 minutes or so, and the keyboards are warm already, should not be the case. And there's a lot of heat coming out the sides. So, I really feel that there is something up thermally with this machine. Maybe Asus needs to take a closer look, maybe issue a BIOS update that tweaks the fan behavior because this is definitely not cutting it. It's throttling way too much. Yes, it does not go below its base clock speed, but honestly, if you have a CPU that's capable of staying at 4.8 uh, if needed, but it doesn't go over 4.5 and can almost always stay between the two and a half to three or even two and a half to three and a half gigahertz range, you're basically not getting the most out of this eight core chip. So that's definitely something that Asus needs to look into. In terms of the surface temperatures, uh, okay, this is another really crazy thing. Now, if you game on this for prolonged periods of time, everything gets hot, like to the touch, especially these corners like this and this front, there is no palm rest. So, I mean, you, Asus bundles this little thingy. This is, this is a rubber palm rest that they bundle, but if you're not using that, um, this whole surf, the whole frame, the edge of the frame is extremely hot. Over a period of time, it gets too hot to touch. Uh, temperature wise, it's in north of 45 degrees. The, uh, the keyboard right now is sitting at about 37. Let's just take a measurement, it's at 36 degrees, but it's 36 degrees with absolutely no load whatsoever. Um, under stress while gaming, 
this temperature spikes up pretty quickly. So there is something of a concern with respect to thermals on this machine. Again, could be an isolated incident, but what worries me is the fact that Asus informed us that these are all standard retail units. So these are not like special reviewer devices. This is all pulled out of the retail lot. So if you guys, one of you were to buy this machine and uh, take it home and find that there is this like, it's basically heating up like crazy and throttling, it's not gonna be good. It's not gonna be good at all. So thermally bad, just like not very impressed. Although I do feel there is room to improve. Asus could fix it with a software update, but let's see if that happens. So the Asus Zephyrus Duo is not a light machine by any means. This, this thing weighs about 2.4 kilograms, but that's not the only weight you'll have to deal with. There's also the palm rest. Then there is uh, the power brick, of course. And you know, if you're traveling with this, there'll be a bunch of other things. Like for me, it was our temperature gun, our x rite that's not all. There was a screwdriver kit involved. And it gets heavy. There's a mouse. There's a controller. And then there's, of course, my external hard drives. Oh, this is not... That didn't have to go on there, but okay. It's... Yeah. Don't carry it on your arm. Definitely carry it in a backpack. Oh yeah, three and a half kilos in your back. Not a big deal. Actually pretty... Pretty cool. Bro, Zalo, yeah. So with the performance part out of the way, let's talk about the display because that sort of ties into how good this machine might be for content creators. Okay, so I have some numbers here. Now, Asus says that the Zephyrus Duo has its primary display, Pantone validated, it's cal calibrated at the factory, and blah, 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 great for content creators, whatnot. And honestly, I was very skeptical till I actually used my X-Rite to measure the panel. And turns out their claim is absolutely true. So here's what the numbers look like, okay? Right out of the box, the display has a Delta E of just 1.47 which basically means that if you're editing in the sRGB color space, you are getting absolutely accurate colors to the point where at least you cannot tell the inaccuracies visually apart. So you're good to go. As long as Delta is below three, we're fine. This is at 1.47. Post calibration. So I ran a second calibration run and we not I noted that the sRGB color space is covered by up to 99%, which is very impressive. The Adobe RGB space is covered at about 65.8% and the DCI-P3 color space is covered by up to 68.4%. Now, here's the best part. The display is actually quite absolutely capable of displaying all of your colors accurately, except for very specific shades of green and orange. And that's what's really interesting. Let me just... This is easier for me to read off of the graph. I like graphs. Okay. So when we measured for the sRGB color space, we found that yes, the panel does accurately reproduce the entire sRGB color space, and but has the representation going above and beyond and the, sats the gamut volume is larger than that of sRGB. So it's actually even capable of reproducing some colors in the green and orange range that are beyond the sRGB color space. Now here's the thing, um, Asus calibrates this on the basis of Adobe RGB. We would recommend that if you were to get this for your creative purposes, make sure to recalibrate it to the sRGB color space. And once you do that, once you do recalibrate this display to the sRGB color space, your Delta E comes down to point seven six that is a stellar display right here guys like i'm not even kidding this kind of color accuracy is something that you see from very high-end professional desktop monitors so this is getting like some solid points with respect to color accuracy of course we also tested if we can actually do the 300 hertz thing and using the ufo test industry standard it does great awesome moving past So we also need to go over the build and design of the Zephyrus Duo. Now, 
Asus has like basically fallen in love with the magnesium alloy. So they've used mag alloy to build this entire laptop and it's actually super, super nice. Like I really like this new muted look. Um, seeing how the older Zephyrus machines used to be, there's uh, very little in the way of RGB and flashy lights and sharp angles. They're trying to go for a more elegant look. And from what I believe is that this year, the entire Zephyrus series is basically, they're putting it creator first and gamer second. Um, they still love their gamers. They're still great gaming hardware, but design-wise. Now, it's solid mag alloy, weighs quite a bit. And in order to aid the airflow, there are two things that they've done that's pretty awesome. One is, of course, the screen pad that lifts up by 13 degrees. And the other thing is, the back actually has extra elevated feet like these feet over here are much larger than what we've ever seen before so it creates a little lift at the bottom as well so overall the back is raised the front is also raised there's lots and lots of place for air to be pulled in from pushed out of um, and the build quality on this is really nice perhaps one of the nicest things that i personally really liked is this little attention to detail so the edge of the display entirely has it's got a ribbed finish. So what that means is if you want to lift this laptop up with a single finger, your finger is not slipping. It's one is of course the hinge, the hinge quality is pretty awesome, but this textured ribbed finish allows your grip to be solid and doesn't let your finger slip. And it doesn't matter where you lift it up from, from the side, from the top, it's all around. And it's just a nice little touch. It's a very small thing, but it's the small things that matter. Um, so yeah, great design, really like it and uh, I think this is going to be something that a lot of people would be able to walk into work meetings with without drawing eyeballs. So now that we have all of the meaty stuff out of the way, let's talk about the usual stuff. That is the keyboard, the trackpad and the I.O. Interestingly, nothing usual about it on the Zephyrus Duo. First off, the keyboard, so it has 1.4 millimeters of travel, it's a chiclet style keyboard. The keys themselves, the keycaps, are fairly large, but they're placed fairly close together. Honestly, it takes a little getting used to. Um, what's really cool is that the arrow keys double up as the lighting controller, so you could basically dim the lights on the keyboard if you wanted using that, or even change the effect like so if you wanted to. Um, I like the rainbow lighting. So there, that's that. There's also a few dedicated keys. There's always going to be an Armory Crate key that Asus would like to bundle with their high-end gaming laptop. So that's right here. Uh, brings up Armory Crate, great stuff. Other than that, uh, what I really appreciate, again, is that Asus has built in a hardware-based shortcut for the Windows snipping tool. Now, okay, you can do a screenshot because you've got the uh, Windows key print screen a shortcut there but snipping if you guys want to snip something like take a screenshot of a part of the screen you typically have to go to start search for the snipping tool and then do the whole thing but asus has built a shortcut right in and that's actually super super handy additionally you also get to control things like your volume microphone all of that is bundled into the function key and cool thing all of the keys are individually backlit. So there it's uh, individually LED lit. So you've got uh, per key RGB as the, as us people would call it. Okay, so all the keys have per key RGB, which is really great, makes everything very, very clearly visible, but it's so stupid. Um, the function keys, for some reason, the F numbers don't light up. So if you're sitting in the dark, like I was last night while testing this gaming laptop, and wanted to hit a function key to start and stop recording metrics, I could not tell which one was the F10 key because the number F10 doesn't light up. What's really nice is that you also have a dedicated key to disable the secondary display in case uh, you're trying to save battery or you know, you, you're playing a game which is just not able to cooperate properly with this whole dual display situation. Overall, a pretty decent and a pretty good actually i would call it a really nice keyboard it, typing on it is not as fun as it is on the scar series of laptop but it's all right but i do like the layout it's usable the trackpad is a vertical trackpad this is something that's been pretty standard for zephyrus machines lately um, and you have this button it's touch sensitive area on the top left which also brings up the number pad so 
they're doing this thing it's it's okay what i would really appreciate is the individual left and right key uh buttons these these clicks are really nice now on to the io and this is something that i have beef with like i really do have beef with all of the IO, the, all the primary IO, your two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports are on the right, as is the Thunderbolt 3 port. Now, what happens is, unless you're left-handed, great, good for you. Like, this is the one thing you'll be like, oh my God, it's so great to be left-handed. But if you're right-handed, your mouse goes here, and so do all of your peripherals. Now, I have, for example, currently, my x right i1 Display Pro connected, um, some time ago, I also had an external SSD connected over the Thunderbolt port. And honestly, that stuff sort of interferes with your mouse. That's one. Second thing is the heat coming out of the exhaust vent on this side, like it comes out with a vengeance, like it goes fairly far out, which means any peripheral that you have on this side or any ice cold drink you might have on this side or any cup of hot tea that got cold on this side, all of this stuff is gonna start seeing a spike in its temperature over a period of time. Not even kidding. It is definitely noticeable. And uh, if you're sitting in an air conditioned room, okay, fine, you may not notice it as much, but if you're sitting in a room that's not air conditioned and you just have a fan on, things are gonna get started. Things, things will get really hot really quickly. So not really happy with the IO situation the placement at least um, they do asus does place some ports on the back so you have a full-size hdmi port an ethernet jack and another usb uh, 3.2 gen 1 port and very honestly i would have just preferred if all of these ports were at the back i mean it, it's better than uh, you know having them here where they interfere with the mouse and also get subject to heat on the back at least they'll only be subjected to the heat now the sound on this um You've got down firing speakers and they're just about barely average. I wouldn't rely on these to give me a good movie watching experience or a solid gaming experience, irrespective of what kind of game you are playing. Just use headphones, it's just way better that way. Or use wireless headphones, you're better off that way. Uh, but built in speakers in a pinch, yeah, sure. Casual gaming, sure. But if you're getting onto CSGO with your friends, if you're getting onto a session of Valorant, or if you're playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare, uh, even getting into Warzone for that matter, you want to have that spatial awareness. And these speakers completely lack that. It's a fairly tinny and hollow sound. Um, not a big fan of it. Uh, in a pinch, it works. But genuinely, honestly, I would just use a pair of headphones with it. Last and not the least, let's talk battery life. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to be using this machine on battery to begin with. It's just... A no just don't do it because there's so much over here that is designed to run your battery completely dry you've got the secondary screen so you're saying okay fine i'll switch it off turned off the secondary display great then you say oh my rgb is going to eat up my light so i'll turn the rgb off completely now you have a completely blank uh, keyboard there's no lighting there and you say, oh, hey, my 300 nit display that I have, I can turn the brightness down on that thing. So you're like, okay, let's go down to minimum brightness. And now you can barely see anything on the screen in bright daylight anyway. Even indoors for that matter, it's hard to sort of decipher what's on the display right now. So, um, and then you of course go into Armory Crate and you say, you know what, I'm gonna put this to the most power efficient profile, which is silent. Or you say, you know what, I trust Windows more so I'll go to Windows mode and turn my power setting to battery life. Even with all of this, don't expect this to be able to game or edit or render. It then just turns into a browsing machine. Definitely battery life on this is just not a thing to be talked about, to be very honest. This is a powerful machine. These are powerful components. They want power. They demand power. It's a 45 watt TDP CPU in here, like seriously. And just honestly, keep it plugged in. Now, here's the interesting part. The Thunderbolt 3 port on the side also supports power delivery. So you can use a 65 watt um, USB PD charger to charge this machine. But here's the thing, if you have, you cannot game on it, forget gaming on it, okay? It's not gonna charge your laptop if you're gonna be gaming off the 65 watt PD charger. In fact, your components are not gonna get enough power to be able to run at their full potential anyway. 
the only way to meaningfully use your laptop or uh, rather the Zephyrus Duo with a 65 watt PD charger is to do all of this put it in power save profile and only do light tasks like browsing the web listening to music and uh, you know maybe typing up a document or two nothing else that will allow you to charge this machine and use it as well use with the 65 watt PD charger However, the 240 watt charger that Asus bundles with this laptop is actually pretty compact compared to what we've seen in the past. Like the past things used to be huge, uh, but now they've really slimmed that down. The power connector and the power adapter is pretty small. So honestly, you wouldn't have uh, much of an issue. If you're, if you're gonna carry this around, you can carry a small power brick around as well. So no big deal there. So that's been our uh, review of the Zephyrus Duo. This is the Core i7 variant with a 1080p 300 hertz display thank you guys for watching this video make sure that before you close out of this window you hit the like and subscribe button hit the notification uh, bell icon so that you don't miss any future updates from us and as for me i'm gonna go and lie down because i think i'm gonna pass out from all the exhaustion i've had while testing this laptop so i'm gonna see you guys hopefully at another point in a video on our channel okay bye